osobuko. Osobuko is really the shank, right? right? And so imagine, you know, this is my shank right here, and you kind of cut it like that. And it can come from veal, which is best, but technically it can come from beef, pork, etc. What David has done is he's taken the osobuko and he's given it a little bit of a flour um, coating. It's seasoned flour, flour, salt, pepper. And the reason we do that is just kind of to seal it. It's not really that it's going to seal the juices as much because it really doesn't. A lot of people say it does. I don't think it does. I think the reason for it is to give it some texture. So what we're going to do is the flour will seal it a little bit. You get the pan nice and hot. And then you basically have to really take great care to caramelize all the surfaces. Let's pretend that we uh, went ahead and we caramelized all sides and sort of uh, toasty, golden brown all the way around. So just put the osobuko in there for a sec. All right. After you cook, there's a lot of flavor that gets left here. You know, when you're cooking this, there's a lot of flavor that's left in the pan. What you should do is empty when, when you're ready and, and the osobuko has been browned on all sides. You hear the term deglazing. What does that actually mean? It means that there's a lot of these little sticky flavor things that have stuck to the bottom of the pan. And what we want to do is, both economically speaking and flavor speaking, we don't want to waste any of that. So we're going to deglaze. How are we going to deglaze? We're going to take some things that have a lot of liquid to them, and by putting them in a hot pan, they're actually going to create a little bit of moisture that then removes all of those par particles that are sticking to the bottom of the pan, and so we don't waste that flavor. So what we've added is sort of what we call mirepoix, and it can be anything that you have just about. I mean, in this case, it's celery, carrot, onion, and we're going to actually let that be for a second. And do you notice how, you remember how we had all those like tidbits in there? Look, they're all gone. Now normally you would just take the pan, throw it in the sink, call it a day. But what we're going to do here is we're going to actually use it, we're going to deglaze it a little bit, and then the vegetables are going to create all those part particles come up, and then we're going to take some marsala wine, and we're going to add that in. And we're going to let that be for a few seconds. Normally we would go a little further. We'd let the alcohol fuse out of the wine and just have that grape essence left. And now we've added some chicken stock. So now what we're going to do is we're actually going to um, let that reduce a little bit. We pretend we do. And then we're going to put it back. We're going to pour this back in the pan here. And really what you want to do is you want to cover, you want to submerge your, uh, we have a Godzilla or Sabuco here, so um, it's really kind of a large one. But when you do it at home, make sure you tightly close the, the slow braised meat, and then you place it in the oven. Now what we do at the restaurant, you know, we cook all day long, our ovens are nice and hot. At night, we will take this Sabuco, the short rib, and we will actually leave it in a very, very low oven for like 12 hours. And risotto. Mm -hmm. David makes great risotto. What we did here is, okay, so we use a little butter, and then uh, shallots, and we're actually going to toast the aborio rice. I mean, to make risotto, you really need Italian aborio rice. It's what we call no color. It's cooking without color, cooking it very lightly so it softens and loses the tang and the acidity, but, but, um, but still all the flavor. Yes. Okay. Right. So you, you slowly add liquid to it as it cooks, and then the starch is released, and you get this very creamy, yep. binding um, consistency to it. We started by with the shallots, that's what la layer number one, and then we took the rice and we toasted that, that's layer number two. Now we added some wine that we're going to let reduce, that's layer number three, and we still haven't even gotten to the saffron and all that yet. So again, it's a, it's a matter of taking a product, getting the essence of the flavor, concentrating it, then moving on to the next layer and the next layer and the next layer, and that's just a small part of the dish as a whole. The final step is let the wine, get the liquid get fully absorbed, thank you, mm -hmm. the liquid fully absorbed in the rice, um, get the alcohol out of the wine, add your saffron, continue stirring, and that's what it's going to look like at the end. All right? I mean, it's very simple. Uh, we're probably going to finish it. Once it gets to the right thing, the next layer of flavor is going to be a little bit more butter, potentially a little bit of mascarpone, if you want, which has a, a creamy element, and Parmesan cheese. Right, David? So, uh, yes, finish, so we're going to finish it with butter, Parmesan cheese, and that is what it's going to look like at the end. Yeah, well, we have another. We have a plate. This is just to hold it for a second. Mm -hmm. And we're going to get a pan hot, and we're going to take some of our liquid, and we're going to turn that, we're going to reduce that just to a syrup now. I'm going to use that as our sauce. A base of... This is beautiful. Nice result, David. And then we are going to take our 
Now at the restaurant, what we like to do is we love the bone marrow because there's so much flavor. So we'll stick a little bit of a fork in there so that uh, people can enjoy that. And then we're going to take our refreshing lata. It's a very sensuous dish, isn't it, Chef? Oh, well, thank you. And then just to finish, what I would do is take a little additional um, orange rind or lemon rind. There it is. Swiss chard leaves. I'm going to use that. Again, Swiss chard being sort of an Italian heritage. <laughs> 